We've been seeing all morning, all people clashing with police, multiple fires burning in Minneapolis. So that had some people, you know, on Twitter talking to us, letting, wanting to know uh, what is the psychology behind when people riot. Joining us now live on Skype is Dr. Shonda Kraft. She's the Dean of the School of Health and Human Services at St. Cloud State University. Dr. Kraft, thanks so much for joining us here this morning. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, I, I, before we even get into the rioting, can these past few days have been traumatic for so many people, beginning with the death of George Floyd and then watching it over and over so many times, and then this happening in our cities. I think a lot of people are just feeling a lot of pain right now. Absolutely. You know, I've been talking to some colleagues and friends um, throughout the last couple of days, even my own husband and my children, and, you know, just trying to make sense of this. It, it, it is sad. It's, um, you know, there have been a lot of tears. There have been a lot of questions. Um, there's been a lot of sadness, you know, not just for the city and what's going on, but, you know, for Ms. Floyd's family. And it, it just feels unbelievable. Psychologists have looked at this, looked at the psychology of protests, looked at the psychology of what we might call, you know, rioting. What, uh, talk us through some of what's going on there. Yeah, well, you know, when our when our brains really perceive a threat in the environment, we're, we're automatically gonna respond in a few different ways. Um, you know, right after a trauma, our minds are likely to see the world as very dangerous. And when we perceive danger, one of those stress responses is fight. You know, we've all heard of fight or flight. Um, that fight response, you know, it really looks like self-preservation. It looks like defending your space, um, but it can also really be uh, a manifestation of really deep-seated resentments and frustration and disappointment. And people may want to find other people to join their fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kraft, we've talked earlier about this is not the group of peaceful protesters. This is a smaller group of people, uh, different from what we had seen throughout the day uh, earlier on. And I've seen so many different reactions to what we saw happen in Minneapolis last night. And it's not necessarily just a matter of criminality. I mean, there's something more to that in terms of how this may not represent what somebody might usually do. Right, yeah, I mean, when, when this level of frustration and resentment and sadness really rises to a collective action or a group or community response, um, you know, that group provides some anonymity. You know, you can be faceless, nameless, um, but it also provides energy and, and it can really propel feelings that you're already having and this sense of, oh, somebody else feels the same way I feel and it's okay for me to feel this way. You know, too many times we are we're really told to ignore our negative emotions, that it's not okay to be angry or it's not okay to be sad or to be scared, that we're supposed to be happy or, you know, kind of wait for something else to happen. And, you know, some people get tired of waiting and, and they want to hear that there are other people out there who are thinking and feeling the same way that they are. What, what really can make these types of responses dangerous, though, is that it can be difficult to understand who's the leader. Um, you know, that leadership can shift very quickly and that response that they are asking from the group um, can become more and more dangerous at times as well. And, and I think that's what we've been seeing the last few days. I think many people, Dr. Kraft, respond to this, uh, to the images of the vandalism, of the fires, of the violence, and they say, all right, what's the point? What's the point of this? What does this accomplish? Is that, a, is that a good question to ask or is that not the question that anyone out there is really thinking about? You know, it is a good question, but it's not the only question. And when we're just focusing on what we see on the news or the behaviors or, you know, kind of, it's very easy to kind of other you know, mm. people and, and to, to not think that it's something that's about you. But, you know, one of my favorite quotes comes from Martin Luther King Jr. You know, he said that an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere and that, you know, whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. And really when there is such a strong sense of injustice, um, repeated abuse or neglect or a group feels like that their values and experiences are just not being heard, that they're not being reflected, um, they want to regain a sense of power and, and they want to have a sense of control. And so, you know, we know that when trauma happens, 
the common emotional reactions are fear, anxiety, anger, and sadness. Um, and what do we do in normal situations when we feel those emotions? We turn to others. Um, we, we are trying to express that rage and that frustration, but we also want to regain a sense of hope and we want to see the situation change. And so I think just focusing on the behaviors which are that may be criminal and, and are dangerous is not the only place. Mm -hmm. We know that there's a group of people who want to be heard um, and maybe one of the best ways for us to, to stop we're seeing right now, or at least to slow it down, is to give some space for people to be heard in a way that really feels like it's going to bring hope and change, but also that's going to validate the very real feelings of sadness and anger that, that are going on right now. That's just wonderful advice, because I think a lot of people feel really helpless right now in what they should be doing, but simply listening and understanding and trying to understand uh, some of this and some of this anger and pain and frustration right now um, hopefully could be helpful. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I, I think we, we just need things to to settle down to a point where it can be, there's an obvious opening for for discussion and, and also understanding that for some people, it's gonna feel like the time for discussion has passed. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. We really right. need to move into action. Yeah, I mean, peaceful protest has happened for some time and and here we are again, I think. Uh, maybe that is how some people feel, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dr. Shondacraft, thank you so thank much you. for your insight, for being with us. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.